Welcome to the final chapter of the road trip. It's Laura Helen, aka Mummy, Forever Family, Forever Free. And David, aka Daddy, 831 Designs, Book Coaching. Boom. Boom. Let's the go. Final day of the road trip. What happened after the Grand Canyon? <gasps> Where did they go? Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> so we left the Grand Canyon around 3 pm, 3 4 pm in the afternoon, and we then drove from there. To Vegas. We got there in the evening and. The oh my gosh, I was driving. Laura's driving. The, I was in the back with sat nav. Lights everywhere, sort of fountains, the, all sorts going on. Three to five lanes, and I'm like. <gasps> where are we going? Where are we going? And we're like watching. And she goes, um, Where's your next? Uh, no, no, no. She goes, Wow, look at that. So, so there's me looking at a huge water fountain, she's now. And she goes, Where's your next? I don't know, I'm not looking at the map, I'm looking over there, where you told me to look. <laughs> and then he'd go, go right, go right. And I'm like, oh, it's so big. No, no, no. You can't stop in the middle of the road. But look at that. Oh. So that was... Arriving in Vegas at night time in a car. We've never ever been Be before. Be careful. <laughs> it's, it's flashy dangerous. lights. <laughs> it's a really cool thing. It was so dangerous, seriously, it was so dangerous. Yeah. Because there was so much to see. All four of us were like, oh, 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 oh. and then Dave's trying to direct me while going, oh, and I'm trying to make sure I get in the right lane and go in the right turn in again while going. Oh. And if the phone hasn't updated yet, no, ah, oh, we missed it. Right now, we've got to do U-turn or find another way, which was. We spent a good twenty minutes near where we needed to be, but not actually where we needed to be. Not in the right place. Because we just got so caught up in the lights and the magic that is Vegas. It was just so awesome, wasn't it? It yeah. was so cool. We should have done a, a trip trip around, just to have a look at the lights before we decided to But even then it's so dangerous because you want to see and then there's people that are like from Vegas and Ubers and taxis that are like, get out of the way. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh. driving at like four mile an hour going, oh my God, Let's it's go. so pretty. It's so cool. Look, there's Trump Towers. Oh, controversial. <laughs> so and then we got to the car park, um, and Ty, Ty was asleep. Ty was Ty asleep. Was asleep. So we took, Jean took her suitcase. I took mine. And another. And another. So we had three suitcases. I carried the sleeping Tyler. Mm, Laura carried sleeping Tyler. It took twenty minutes from the car park to our room. It was a trek. To our room. We got it, to go through, literally from one end of the casino. All the way through. The biggest casino in Vegas, we were staying in the MGM Grand. So it's all the way through this massive casino, past the restaurants. Just, it seemed to go on forever. Restaurant, circus. The... Normally would be exciting. Yeah. But when you've got luggage and a sleeping child. I don't know if you've ever carried a sleeping child. They are so heavy when they're asleep. Oh my God, it felt like forever. So that was sort of 10 minutes, right? Quick swap over. So Laura's carrying the two bag. I'm carrying them. It's getting heavy now. <laughs> Can I swap? <laughs> And like doing this every sort of We're five tall, minutes. so he's like a big kid. He's a big kid. He's only five, but he's like so big. So we got to our room. What our room like? Oh my gosh, it was so beautiful. We said an MGM Grand. Oh my gosh. He booked it for Airbnb, so we wasn't paying fifteen hundred quid night, which is what they should be. We wasn't paying that. Thank God. Thank you, Airbnb. We should we say what we paid? Yeah, go on. We paid about five hundred pounds for the week. For the week in MGM Grand. It's normally Grand. fifteen hundred a night. Thank you, Airbnb. Thank you. Forever grateful for our lifestyle. Yay! So, we love Airbnb. It was. Mm, oh not, my gosh, it was amazing. The beds were big and fluffy, and you could jump on them. You had the soft, fluffy robes like you expect to have and, in a hotel. And a whirlpool in Vegas. bath. The bath was like like the kids could swim in the bath. Yep. Yeah, and it had the whirlpool yeah. thingy. Oh my god, as well as a big shower, like we could all fit in the shower, like it was yeah. ginormous. The double Kitch sink, and a kitchen, and a little kitchenette. Need. Oh my gosh, it was incredible. Beautiful yeah. room. Internet was awesome. Really, really good. Oh, internet. such an amazing place. And for the price we paid, we felt so like, it was a magical. Bit cheeky, cheeky. The reason we went to Vegas was to go to the Tenet's Growth Con, run by Mr. Grant Cardone. If you don't know who he is, look him up, check him out. Tenex, you probably see me wear my hat all the time. Don't be a little bitch. Beep. Normally so family friendly. But um, Grant Cardone and his wife Elena Cardone, they're two little girls. Oh, amazing. Tenets Grove Con. We went all the way through the hotels and went through down the strip to go check in. I can't say enough. Awesome people. They make time for you. If you watched the video before when we were in Miami, we actually went down and met them in person. Beautiful, incredible people. Day one.
a money book saying, don't get rich quick, get rich for sure. Lovely. So we had that on the front of her money book. She took 150 copies to the Tenex Growth Con. Within two days, she, she sold all 150 books and not at the normal price. She sold them at $20 a book. Some people paid like $100 a book, but the 10th Growth Con, we met Orion, one of our bestest friends and one of our authors in our collaboration book. Hey, Orion, talking about the 10th Growth Con. Woo -hoo. So Tegan absolutely hustled hard. Her pitch was on fire. It was just pure magic. Everyone loved her hustle. They had, they had stickers in our goodie bags that we got with our books and pens. One of them says Young Hustle or Young Hustler. So she had that stuck on the back of her blazer. Everyone loved that she was hustling. She's like, oh, can I practice my pitch on you? So cute. And then she does the pitch. It's killer. Everyone buys at least one copy. She sold 150 books in two days and made over $3,000. That's not including the fact that we bought them on Amazon. Oh, my gosh. Amazon sometimes put our books on specials. But we still get the yeah. same royalties because we didn't change the price. Amazon does it as a special. So they just put Tegan's books on half price. So we were like, this timing is amazing. So we bought 150 at half price, but got full royalties. So but the books effectively cost us $1, and we made $1,000 in royalties before she even sold them. So that was like, ah! And then she goes, win -win. smashes it, over $3,000 in two days, sending her book to all these entrepreneurs who just love her hustle, love her drive. It was pure magic, and... The speakers mm -hmm. were on fire. They had like, sorry, to talk. Come. Me and Tegan went, so like, I'll get all excited. So we met some incredible networking people, but some of the people on stage, we had Russell Brunson. I'm going to forget everyone now because I'm getting all excited. He was really cool. Tegan was really excited to meet him because we use ClickFunnels. Click Funnels. And um, she knows of him, so it was like, ah! Grant Cardone. Had the spin gyms there. Um, Tegan was out Working there out every day. Tegan's every like, other day. Every she's every like day. Forbes Riley is known as the like the queen of the pitch. Like she gets everyone pitch perfect and out there and makes it happen. And um, Tegan's there with Forbes Riley doing the spin gym. She pitches Forbes. Forbes is like, yeah, yeah, give me money and buys Tegan's books. Introduces her to her daughter. Oh, it's amazing. Forbes and Tegan really connected, which was really beautiful. And actually, on the second day, second day, I think it was. Forbes actually brought Sharon Netcher and she was like, you have to meet this kid. So she brings Sharon and Tegan together and Tegan's like, oh, hi Sharon! And Sharon's like, oh, it's Tegan! And Forbes's like, oh my God, you know this kid! It was a really surreal moment. It was a really surreal moment. Absolutely crazy. Hey, Ryan! So it's just the Tennis Growth Con was a fire. We learned so much. We did such incredible networking, met some incredible people. It just was so... Awesome, and Tegan's notebooks was full. I love watching her just take notes and be on fire. And we just, yeah, new connections. Ah, oh, just amazing. He's done it. He's doing another one this year. I think it's October time. If you can get into any training with Grant Cardone, especially when it comes to sales and stepping out of your comfort zone, he is on yeah, fire he with is sales. Awesome. Really good. Really good. Everything's a sale. Anything you're unhappy with in life, this is something he says. <laughs> Anything you're unhappy with life, it's because you didn't close a sale. And that really hit me. Out of all the things you said, that really hit me. Because when we have moments where I'm like, oh, what if we could have done that? And I'm like, if I'd have made a sale, I could have done that. So now I really, and I've got all those books on my audio. Is it called Audible? Audible. So I have all these books there. I'm working my way through them all. Sell will be sold. Sell will be sold is a really great one. That's the one I'm, my favourite that I'm working through. Oh my gosh. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. I'm so excited for him and Tegan to work together and do what he does for kids. Because if they can get that mindset in them when they're young the world is limitless for them instead of having the whole we were brought up with sales and the sleazy car salesman no offense to the car sales guy but the sleazy suit and the slick hair and they're gonna like kind of con you out of some money you're gonna come away with a rough deal it's how we all grew up knowing about sales mm. if kids can know it's sell or be sold sales is everything like our kids can sell. Oh my god! Even my little boy. Tyler sells me. When he has value for a favor, <laughs> he sells it to him like you know it's going to make him the best dad in the world. He would do an awesome favor, and he's so great at it. And it's so mm. awesome. Tyler, like, <laughs> it's absolutely natural. Tegan, like, she sold through grand for books in two days. 
Maybe she'd have sold more if she hadn't run out. That's all she had to sell. These kids are on fire. Yeah. If we had that kind of start, I'm so excited to see what they achieve. Yeah. And to think if we could give all that to kids so that they know sales, it's a big deal. How important it really is. Everyone needs to know sales. If you can sell anything, you're set for life. It doesn't matter what happens and what swaps and changes with the world. You don't even have to have a product. If you can sell, you're going to be affiliate for someone else. We even do that with 831 Designs now. We have affiliates that get 10% of the sales that they sell for us. Mm. They sell our big book deals. They get really great money. So, pe so people have, they're living a lifestyle helping us sell our products. And they haven't had to have a product. They just have to know sales. So yes, I'm going to stop talking about Grant Cardone now. But if you don't know who he is, check him okay. out. Follow him for a bit. If you don't like the first video, keep going. Sometimes he takes a while to warm. He's just really real and really raw, and I really love that about him. He has a private jet. He has a picture of him up on the private jet, sat on it like... Uh. <laughs> he came from nothing. He worked so hard to get where he is. It didn't go to um, Tex Procon, so we was in Vegas and we done swimming. Um, we got a huge pour, huge heated pour. Trouble is, we was there in February, so it was a little bit cold. The air was cold, <laughs> but the pool was really hot, so it was beautiful. We done tennis, um, we done top golf, which if you've never done it, you stand on the open side of a building and shoot balls out across an open green, and you got like trying to driving range. Yeah, like a driving range. But like in a building, so you've got like three storey building. It's three, wasn't it? No, it's three. Oh, okay. Might I thought the kids could only go up to level three and then okay. it just kept going. It might be five, might be five. Um, so we've done that a couple of times. Cause first time we did, I thought, okay, we'll just do it for an hour, see how he gets on. And he loved it, loved it. And had some lunch there and sort of made a good day of it. Um, he had a few other games, which we love about playing. And then we come back a couple of days later and yeah, he was awesome and he loved it. He takes to sports and stuff. His throwing and his arm, he's like, he's really got a strong arm. And his accuracy was awesome. Why well, didn't go for that red one over there? In there. We went to like the Bellagio and Caesar's Palace. And, and we saw the volcano fountain. The volcano yeah, water things. Show. Oh my gosh. That was really, really good. It was so cool. We went inside the one with all the painted ceilings and the beautiful Caesar's shops. Palace. And Caesar's the aquarium. And the aquarium at the end. It was really oh, nice. the kids loved the aquarium, didn't they? Yeah. And there was one shop that had this big chocolate waterfall. We all stared and dribbled at that for a bit. I think that was Bellagio. Because they had a big... Um, because it was the Chinese New Year, Year of Dog, so they had a big sort of dog display. Yeah, like, like you're not a, talking like a little display, it's like a big thing you walk through over yeah. water and bridges. And, and like a 20 foot dog that, that sort moved. of like, tail, tail wagged and moved <laughs> around. It's pretty awesome to see. It was really cool. And they had this massive glittery horse that the kids liked in one of the receptions. We went to so many different hotels in the evening. We wanted, uh, we wanted to get out there and just see it all quite early as well so it's yeah. February so it got dark early which was really great so all this stuff happened all the lights of all the lights and the water features and it just was so cool there's mm. one in the daytime went to is it Luxor it's a Luxor. big giant pyramid yeah with like all Egyptian -y things the kids <coughs> loved it like they're learning hieroglyphics at the moment they really like the whole Egyptian thing we've got them doing like the sand man by the Egypt statues it was really mm. funny um, and what do we do? Indoors wasn't so cool though. I thought they'd have something kind of pyramidy or rooms with like the pyramid and cool. Yeah, it's an and... open thing. No, it's just square rooms. It's just square inside. No. The... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Luxor. When you've been told there's ever a fantastic there hotel, really, really like, oh my gosh, it was incredible. And then we, uh, the plan was to drive back from Vegas back to Miami, which is going to take 40 hours. West Palm Beach. To West Palm Beach to drop the car back off because we hired it from Enterprise five days before in Miami in Miami so the plan was to drive it straight back drop it back and then because we had return flights from Miami 
back to London. But when we were um, still in February, <laughs> We kept looking at all our Facebook friends in the UK and they were posting pictures of snow. 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 Um, We'd avoided winter travelling the world. We were like, no, 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 no. Yeah. Let's not go back. Let's book somewhere else. And Dave was like, leave it to me. I will sort it out. No, no, no. no. You can't blame it. Yeah. All right. You did. Slow I'm a control cut. freak and I do it all. And Dave's like, no, no, no. Go do the event. I'll find somewhere nice and warm to go. I will sort this out. So we, we decided to go on... And but before we done that, we took the car to Enterprise and made sure we could leave the car in in Vegas. In Vegas, it cost a bit more money, but we didn't have to trek yeah. back across the country. It was over them in, and they was lovely. The Enterprise was absolutely lovely. They so, were so um, brilliant. Just paid the bit that they needed extra, which saved me forty hours of driving, or saved Woo-hoo. us forty hours of driving, and how much fuel was going to be. And it was easier because then we could fly from Costa Rica from Vegas to Costa Rica. So, I was there booking the flights, oh, not too bad, $100 for each. Yeah. Yeah, $100 each. Booked only an hour and a half. Well, well it's quick enough. Yep, yeah, fine. Booked the Airbnb out there in Costa Rica. Um, yeah, booked it for two months. Can you see how awkward and easy I'm getting? Sure. Booked it for two months. And, um, no, we only booked a month to start with. We just liked it so much. It was right. We booked yeah. a month just to see, because we want to make sure it's what we need a okay, so long story right? short he uh, booked the shut up, shut up. he booked the plane tickets to san jose, san jose in california instead of costa rica didn't realize there were two san jose he, just, he said country, to me on the morning the of the flights oh it's only like an hour flight i'm like huh on the morning we're ready to fly it's only like an hour flight yeah do you mind if i go check so i get on reception um because we'd logged out the wi-fi and stuff so we had to go down and use the free one so I'm on there having a look, going, ah. He's booked it to San Jose in California instead of San Jose in Costa Rica. Could have been worse. He could have booked it in Spain. There's San Jose's everywhere. Yeah. If you're flying to a San Jose, check it's the right San Jose. So with any, Check with any country or any, any again, town, city you want to go. Long story short, five hours later, I managed to get tickets for the next day, wasn't it? Next day. For the next day out to where we needed to actually go. And we went to Costa Rica. What's really funny is we hadn't researched Costa Rica. I normally research everything. So the Airbnb had no reviews, and normally I'm a control freak. The flights, David booked us to the wrong place. And then the actual country, we're Googling it on the way out, and it's got the most poisonous snakes, spiders, fire ants, frogs. What am I missing? Like, anything poisonous and deadly... It seemed to be in Costa they Rica. They seem to have it all. Now, if we'd have Googled it before we got on the plane, I probably never would have gone. I never would have taken my kids. I never would have risked it. It just sounded so scary to me. It was incredible. I'm so glad we hadn't, fun. like, that mess up happened for a reason because it was pure magic. Yeah. Pure magic. I'm going to tell you about Costa Rica next time. Tomorrow. <gasps> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs> Hope you loved it. Any questions about Las Vegas, please drop us a comment below and we'll get back to and you. And tell us what you love and if you want to hear about anything that we've been to or see our previous journeys, look at our previous lives. Any questions, any, you know, you travelling with kids, any questions, how do we do it, all these different things. Let us know, we'll get back, we'll totally answer your questions. We want to do more question and answers with people on how we travel the world with the two kids. of us, two <laughs> little ones and only four carry-on cases. So if you ever want to know what we do and how we do it, chuck us a question below or private messages and we'll we'll do a live soon with all our different questions that we're getting in yeah. and we'll do a live 